What's going on everybody? Welcome back to episode 39 of the single player let's play series. Today I want to get started on something that is long overdue. That's a proper cobble work system. So I've already got a little micro one set up. It's not comprehensive. It doesn't actually cover everything that a cobble works can make, but it covers the things that I tend to use the most. And so it's going to have a turn off system and a lot of automation behind it that's going to be really cool. And so let's go ahead and get started. I've gone ahead and calculated everything that we're going to need, and I've actually got it in a little note here. So we're going to need, let me see, two sag mills. We're going to need a crusher and an alloy furnace. And then, of course, we're going to need some method of generating cobblestone. We're going to probably go with the transfer node with uh, a few of the interaction upgrades. So why don't I get started with all this crafting, because it's going to take a very, very long time. So since in between episodes and in between clip it, sometimes when I'm getting stuff together, I get a little bit distracted from what I'm doing. I've made a chest called the Current Project Materials Chest. Put it over here with our current projects. That way, I can just come here and grab everything out of it, which as you can see, I've got plenty of stuff. So let's head back over here. And I think our cobble works can actually go here in this little basement area. I think that'd be a very, very easy place to put it. And what I think we could do is put it maybe even right here. So if we do here, oh, actually we'll have a power line right there too, and a detector. Look at that, see that makes this so much easier, uh, or a line for our detector, rather, because we're going to need it. I may have just lost a cable, but that's fine. And we need to preserve, that's one thing that we will need to keep in mind. We need to preserve, uh, oops, that turned into cracked because that's a smelting recipe, my bad. Uh, we need to preserve the appearance over here a little bit but that's pretty much the only thing that we need to really worry about everything else we can continue to put underground just the way we want so one of the things that i want to do as i clear out this area uh, it's come to my brief attention while i'm thinking about it here i should grab two more enderlink chests uh, hmm. actually i don't even need to do that let me just grab an importer An importer should do us. And then I think we should also have a buffer. Yep, cool. So what we will do then is, let me grab my conduits here. I have pre-crafted some energy conduits as well as some item conduits and 10 of our upgrades for speed and mining. We have a double crusher. We have, um, actually, I don't need this, and I don't need, yeah, I don't need that. We have a double crusher, an alloy smelter, and two sag mills. So each one of the two sag mills, and, um, yeah, actually, we'll leave that there. Each one of the two sag mills will have their own purpose. So the way this machine is going to work is we're going to start off probably down here we'll do here why not and we're going to need a bucket of lava and a bucket of water as it happens i have neither with me so let me go to the foundry and actually yeah let me just go get a bucket of lava and water lava and water acquired i need to eventually set up something for that so that i don't have to constantly go back and forth and i wouldn't mind just kind of fixing this up a little bit so, with everything in its standings, what we want to do is put a piece of cobblestone down with our transfer node on top, and we'll do water and lava on both sides, and we'll do this. Let me grab two pieces of glass if I have them. Uh, yeah, why don't we do, why don't we do tar dark clear glass? I've already got it. Well, you know, I should pr probably preserve that. We'll just use the alpha glass. I'm not really going to use it for anything. That way I can just see the fluids here. And we're going to go ahead and put our upgrades for both speed and mining. So you can see this is getting us cobblestone at a super great rate. Great rate, mate. 8 out of 8. So the buffer, and I actually realized we're going to need a few of them, but that's okay. We have a few. I need to set up auto crafting for those too. But if I hook up the buffer, or hook up the uh, cobblestone transfer node into a buffer, this is going to set our cobblestone going into here and this is important because we want to round robin this stuff so at this point what we're going to do is we're going to insert and extract from the bottom of these machines and so i'm going to take a few minutes to get everything set 
up because this is going to be, quite frankly, um, a little bit annoying to do. So once we do this, though, the other thing that we're going to need that I've just thought about is we need to put down some method of turning on and off our machines. So I'm going to make a capacitor bank. Let's just go ahead and get a very basic one. And I think that's just going to be for, yep, so we'll just do, I mean, it does not have to be impressive at all. This sh will be plenty. We just need something that we can control our redstone signal through. Uh, and I think I made some more, uh, what am I looking for? Cable. Yes, there we go. Perfect. So, let me see here. Uh, we will want to put our basic capacitor bank down here. We're going to tell it to output active without signal. That way, as soon as it gets a signal, it will no longer output power. Ideally. Let me double check that. Let me just grab a lever. I already have one. If I do this, then... Yeah, if I did this, then yep, that's going down. So that is working. Perfect. So the next step to it then is to, at this point, go ahead and get our item conduit set up somehow. So probably just gonna have to deal with it being ugly. So let me get the item conduits all set up and I'm just gonna do a very simple filter setup. So I'll be back in just a little bit. So in setting everything up, I'm not quite done yet, but here's a detector. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it to detect when on the amount 2048 silicone. I've already put void upgrades on all of the drawers of the resources that we will be auto producing here. And so now I should have some redstone and there we go. Let's just grab some conduit binder, turn this into some redstone conduit. And now if I put this here, it's going to receive a signal from there and input it into here. Very cool. So over here on the buffer that's got all of our cobblestone in it, we're gonna set it to extract only on channel gray, always active, round robin enabled. Nothing is inserting on gray, so we are set up and ready to go. Now, if I set the rest of these things, let's see, this is going to be our first stop. So we're going to want to insert and extract. So we're going to insert and extract. Let's see, we'll do gray and I believe we're also going to want to extract on gray. And so what we can do now is this is going to start smelting everything. And if it inserts and extracts, and if I tell this to insert on gray, we'll start to get cobblestone. And I've put in uh, the importer as well as some stack upgrades. So I haven't noticed this extract anything yet. Let me make sure that eventually that's going to do that. Oh, always active. There we go. And so now we should start getting smooth stone into our system as well. So this is kind of the gist of how things are gonna be going, except for this. This is going to be inserting and extracting on gray. but we're gonna have to whitelist it. So let me see, gray, whitelist, cobblestone only to make sure that we're not gonna start wasting our resources. And then if we set it to uh, actually in out, then extract also on gray, always active. And so we'll make sure that all of these are set to uh, make sure that they are all whitelisted on their inserts for stone, stone, this we're also going to want to insert and extract, but this one's gonna be different. So we're gonna insert whitelisting cobblestone on the gray channel. But we're going to extract, and there's a reason why I'm doing this, on the yellow channel, always active, and this one, when we extract it, we want it on round robin mode, because this is going to in out I'm trying to think of which way yellow would be. Yep, there we go, in, out, yellow. So as a result, we also want this guy to be insert on yellow. I went the wrong way, there we go. 
So this is going to give us some sand, and half of it's going to go into our sag mill, which needs to be extracted on gray. So we'll insert, make sure, actually I don't need to whitelist you, but the extract part will be gray. Always active. And so now, for the most part, this should be a working system. I don't see why it wouldn't be. You can see we're getting a wide variety of resources from all of this, just pretty quickly, in fact. And we're going to start getting some smooth stone from the cooking over here. Some gravel and flint from the sag mill here. We're going to get silicone from our sand that's coming from here, but then half of our sand is also going to be going out into our system again. So if I take a look at our sand supply, we already have nine. I say already. That's not really a lot right now. We will get more. So if I look at sand or, well, actually sand, you see we're doing fine. Gravel we're going to be maxed out on. Flint we have a decent bit of, and if I wanted to be nitpicky, I could make it so that the flint went in and out of all of these, but I don't really care. This is one of those machine systems that's just going to always be running, so who cares? Now the last issue is the crusher. The double crusher is going to be very loud, so I want to grab a sound muffler. And I don't know why it said I could craft that from my inventory, because I definitely could not. So we're just going to go ahead and grab a sound muffler real quick. Just to help us out. Of course, we don't want to... Oops. We don't want to mute all of the sounds for the area, just these specifically. In fact, just this one specifically. So the easiest way that I can think to do that is to kind of go back a little ways and then down a little ways. That way, if you do it right, you can see most of this area's blocks sound just fine, and there's just a very small few of them which uh, do not. Now the best part about this is if I turn this down to just two, it's going to, it should, in, in concept, let's see, emit signal when on the amount, when above the amount. Okay, so when, the, when above the amount two, this is going to get a redstone signal, yes? All of these are going to drain their power, meaning that after a while, they're not going to be receiving and using power anymore. This is going to be automatic. So we'll set this to emit a redstone signal when above 2047. That way it'll keep on running. And you can see as soon as I set that, everything filled up again, all the buffers refilled. So I think that's a pretty working cobble work system there. There's one last thing that I want to do, just because I am an aesthetics kind of guy, is we'll set up these item frames and a sign. And let's see, we're going to want to have cobblestone, smooth stone, flint, gravel, and sand. We already have 27 sand. So this will be our gravel, uh, and actually we'll, we'll make this flint. I like the flint better. Stone will go here, and all of this will just be cobblestone. Did I put the extra frames away? I guess I did. Whoops. Uh, actually, we'll call it a mini cobble works. And then this part, let's see, we'll do, just to decorate a little bit, we'll put down that. And you're producing these, but I should have had some silicone. And this is going to be really nice, because now we can actually go through and disable one of the recipes that we made as well for crafting silicone, because we won't have to craft it anymore. It'll always be crafted for us automatically. So if we go in here and take the silicon recipe, we can actually completely get rid of it. We'll start getting silicon automatically. Pretty freaking useful, in my opinion. This is something that I have uh, done on Forger before, which, uh, well, this is this is my my mini setup that I've made on Serve. It's a little bit different, but for the most part it works. And so this gives us everything that we need. We have cobblestone going to the system, cobblestone going to a sag mill, giving us gravel and flint going to the system, cobblestone going to the crusher, giving us sand going into the system, that sand also going into the sag mill, going into silicon, going into the system, and cobblestone going over here to the alloy furnace getting smelted, going into, you guessed it, the system. So now we should be getting quite a lot of stone in cobblestone. 
If I just double check and make sure that everything has a void up here that needs to, we have silicon, gravel, flint, sand, smooth stone, cobblestone. These all have void upgrades, which is perfect. Very cool. So that ended up being a little bit easier than I thought because we had all of those things there. You can see I had the power cell ready. I was ready to do some wireless redstone stuff. And then I realized, well, you know what? There's actually a signal right there. So that worked out very nicely. And I think I cleaned this up perfectly. So that's pretty cool. Why am I here? That's not what I wanted. But one thing that I do want to make is if we take a look up here, there's a few things that I have that I kind of want to do. And one of those things is I should at some point be pretty, whoops, be pretty much ready to go for making a new tool. And this tool is going to be unique to us because we haven't really done anything quite like this yet. Uh, we've done a Matic, but we haven't done a Matic with the purpose of actually being multifunctional. So what I'd like is exactly that. We will make a Matic, and I'm not actually sure which part should be what? So we'll start with Night Slime for the Shovel Head, and then Cobalt for the Axe. Now the reason I'm doing Night Slime is because I want this tool to be capable of mining pretty much everything between... Okay, I want a tool that can work both as a shovel and a pickaxe, or a shovel and a uh, axe, rather. And so I think this will be kind of our solution, but it's not really certain. So we'll see if this works out. Uh, I should have some moss stone. We're just going to throw a piece of mending moss on this. And some redstone would be good. We'll just grab... Um, uh, grab that. And now if we just run over here to the runic arsenal real quick, we do need to grab some experience levels. We'll need 10 and... Boom. Run over to the foundry. And so now if we run over to the... Uh, oh, I was already there. Run over to the Matic tab. I think we should be well balanced here. It's effective on wood, blah, 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 blah. Right click, hoe the ground. Okay, so that's fine. We'll see if this works on all the materials like I really want it to. It definitely seems to be doing fast on wood, which is nice. And let me go ahead and grab our mending moss, and why not do a level of speed. One other enchantment that I may consider adding to it, or rather a uh, modifier, is I might consider adding... Oh yeah, no, this is great. This is actually pretty phenomenal. Cool. Is I may consider, however, at some point adding uh, silk touch, but we'll see if that's really necessary. But for now, that means that we have uh, basically an all-in-one tool for the time being. I know that's not, well not, okay, not an all-in-one tool, it's a two-in-one tool. So that's going to be pretty useful if you ask me, because I, sometimes I need shovel stuff, and with the new Terra Shatterer, this will basically give us a tool that can do two things in one slot, and basically makes us not have to run back here all the time for a shovel. So at this point, with the inventory cleaned up, we can gladly mark this one as done. So why don't we look into making an RF tools pump? Because that will get us lava, and lava will get us obsidian. Alright, there we are. Shape card for the pump is done, and that'll leave us with two empty buckets that I can put back if I like to. And now we just need a builder. Very cool. Now one thing that I would like to do, however, is I've got a power cell. And I've been using power cells, yada yada yada, this, that, the other power cell. I'm done with the power cell concept. I don't want to use power cells anymore. I'd rather use a dimensional transceiver. I haven't made one of these yet, but I'd like to have two of them, of course. They work best in pairs. And so this is going to require me to capture not one, but two Enderman souls. And I don't think I have any soul vials uh, full of them yet. So let's go ahead and get ourselves another one of these. And let's see, quartz. I don't think I have any fused quartz, so we'll go ahead and request three fused quartz. And I'll come back once we have Enderman souls. All right, so we have two Enderman Souls and two Vibrant Crystals ready for our Vibrant Capacitor. So now I just need to run over to the Runa Golf or er, Arsenal and grab a few levels of experience. We have so many at this point that I don't even care about being wasteful. I really should probably, but maybe not. I can't imagine it'll ever actually be inconvenient for us. So I'm going to be back whenever both of these are finished. 
It's worth noting that while that did not take long, that did take 2,000 RF per tick. Pretty intense. So at this point, we're going to need for our transceiver, we're gonna need a few other things. So I'm going to get these little meticulous things done with crafting. There we go, two dimensional transceivers. Now the reason these are important to me is because I want, and we're going to have this, but I want to figure out a way of storing up some lava from our dimension that we're going to, or not our dimension, but from our nether area that we're going to start clearing out. And I have no idea, as far as clearing out for all that lava, I, I want to store it in a large tank. And I don't think our tank options are very extensive, so I think I may continue to go with the tanks from... Hmm, I could do a tinker tank if I really wanted to, but really I should probably just go with one of the large tanks from Immersive Engineering, because they seem to work really well. But my concern is, where should I put it, and where should I put it that isn't going to be too far out of the way because I want to be able to send it a redstone signal to toggle it on and off. And I also want to be able to hook it straight up to the power system that we have already. Should I, I mean, most of this building, most of this room at least, seems pretty packed full of stuff. Like we're pretty much done being able to fit stuff in here. Uh, and you know, it looks like I, I could get rid of this, but I like our little homage to how we used to play the game. Because, I mean, we're almost at episode 40 at this point, and we've gone a very long ways. And so I think it's worth having something to sort of demonstrate how far we've come. That we're from nano suit all the way up through a few different tiers. This down here area probably could have a lava set up, but I would like to build above ground more than having everything underground like this. I have this whole room for auto crafting, so maybe I should be using this room for our large tank. Maybe that's what I should do. I mean, I've got, I've got redstone. I've got a few things. Hmm. Actually, you know what? I just thought of something. We haven't done anything with the refined storage fluid storage yet, so why don't we do that? Why don't we make a fluid storage block? Okay, well that's going to be a massive pain. So I'm going to teach it all the auto crafting stuff and I'll be back when it's all done. That's going to be a lot of iron. I have a feeling that's going to be pretty rough on our whole iron situation. All right, so here we are in the nether. I have our builder block set up with our shape card pump. It's basically set to pump out a huge, huge area. And let me grab some of my ninja stars. Take out this gas before he takes us out. There we are. That is one danger of working in the nether, of course. We'll put our dimensional transceiver down, our chunk loader down, and we will set you to, once again, lava power, receive, and lava, send. So I just realized I forgot to get some sort of a redstone signal, so let me do that, and I'll be back in just a second. All right, let's see, that should be better. And we're getting plenty of power, and as soon as I run this, we should see that it's going to start running through. So I have found a little bit of an issue with this. This is how I'm going to have to set this up, and that should solve it. Is I, for some reason, could not get this lava to go in there until I put a different tank on top. So it's really unfortunate. I've spent quite a few hours messing around with the fluid storage in refined storage and it seems relatively glitchy. Uh, I found several times where external storage that should be working on something like a creative drum or a creative storage uh, fluid cell or something like that just it, it isn't working right so that makes me very concerned and as a result I've gone with a more manual method. We're gonna bypass the fluid storage altogether because we don't really need infinite lava for anything except for this one thing. So what I've done is I've made an automatic obsidian generator with a power off switch. So this block here determines basically when to turn off our system, which is right now whenever we're above 2000 or rather 256 obsidian. Not very much, we're gonna change that. Then this goes into just a simple timer and this timer goes out into basically one redstone repeater tick worth of delay here and then two here. I don't think this is even necessary, but I just like the consistent look. I could probably bypass this and just move straight into it. And then I have two fluid placers. This one is for the lava and this one is for our water. 
the lava has its lava fluid input coming in from our dimensional transceiver here. The water side here has a fluid collector essentially infinitely looping two buckets of water that I put in there. This actually works really well. I was testing it earlier, so why don't we go ahead and do this whenever we're above the amount 2047, which we are not. So this seems to work out pretty well. This seems to be a good rate for the uh, destructor that we have down there because we don't want to overwhelm it with anything, of course. And everything else seems to be looking more or less okay. So I just, at this point, want to fancy this up a little bit. We're gonna put two white lamps down. We'll put one, since, let's see, we'll put one down here. And, oops, turned on. And we'll do the other one here and turn it on. So at this point, all I've got left to do is finish up covering this dimensional transceiver on all sides. There we go. And I just need to hook up the dimensional transceiver to power. Very cool. So a couple of conduit facades later, and I think we're pretty much done here. Well, yeah, pretty much. So all I have to do is that, and now we have automated obsidian. So this is going to be working very much in our favor. And you'll see this is going to just continue to run up until we get 2,000 pieces of obsidian, which is no problemo because we're going to probably want something like that eventually anyways. Getting obsidian really sucks. So it's nice to not have to anymore, isn't it? Well, okay, guys. So I think I'm going to call the episode there. I think we've done plenty of stuff. I do apologize that I ended up kind of fiddle farting a lot with food storage and it didn't work out. Maybe in the future I'll come by and revisit the idea, but certainly not really looking uh, very promising currently because I know Raul's been working his took us off on getting all of the refined storage stuff working on 1.11.2. And so as a result, I'm pretty sure most progress on stuff for 1.10 is more or less at a pretty good pause right now, which is a completely fair thing to do. Uh, of course, it's his mod so he can do anything he wants anyways but i definitely think it's a fair purpose or a fair point for a mod as big as that one i've been maintaining v tweaks and persistent bits on 110 and 111 and for me it hasn't been that bad particularly but i can definitely see how with an extensive mod like refined storage it's probably a nightmare so oh one last thing i did want to bring up with the system is these two are set to pulse mode but this one is such a deactivation, so this guy is always running, and this is still working out just fine. So I guess that's pretty much going to cover it. And of course, uh, leave any comments below if you have any suggestions or any ideas. But uh, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.